So, with so many other, like with so many other projects, I'm gonna roll out my slab. And if you haven't been to a demo before, these are two quarter inch dowels from Home Depot. But anything that has a nice even width will be fine. And then I chose this square dish as my mold. Um, but if you're using something that is glass or plastic or glazed ceramic, um, rather than a mold that if you have something that's wood or just bisqued pottery, you can put it straight on the mold. But if I put clay straight onto this mold, it would stick really, really badly. So I'm going to put a little bit of plastic in here and then carefully start to press my slab into the mold. Depending on the shape of your mold, it can be kind of tricky to get the clay to to push in nice and evenly. But as long as you get it most of the way in, if there's a little spot that you're missing, you can take a soft piece of clay and smush it into that spot. But I'm gonna press it in and then just rip away the excess from the top. And if you haven't made a press mold dish before, this is also a really simple way you can just make one one form rather than taking it to the next step which is what I'm going to do in this demo. But see like right here I have a little spot where it kind of teared away and I didn't want that to happen. I can, since the clay is still nice and soft, I can press a little bit into that spot and it'll be fine. Um, we're going to have to do some smoothing on the outside edge anyways because the texture from the plastic will be visible. So I'm just tearing tearing the excess away, and then making sure that's really pressed into all sides. If you have a damp sponge, you can use that to help you um, press it in softly so you don't get finger marks. And then my top is still ragged, and I'm going to need a super flat surface to attach both sides. So I'll take my X-Acto knife and use the edge of your mold as a guide to slice the top so that it's flat. The plastic gets in, a, in the way a little bit, but kind of just work through the bumps and slide off that top piece. Oops. and trim all this stuff all the way around. So you should have a really straight, flat edge after you finish cutting. Like that. And then you can put that off to the side and let it dry to um, leather hard, and then you'll have to make another one. So ideally, like if, if you have Tupperwares or something where you have two, that's ideal because you can make them both at the same time and keep an eye on them to make sure they're drying at the same rate. But if you don't, um, like in this case, I do not, I'll make this one, put it outside in the sun for 15 minutes or so, and take it back and set it inside and you can use the mold again. So put that off to the side and I'm gonna go get the, the one that's sitting under the heat gun. Okay, so this is the one that was sitting under the heat gun. I don't recommend using the heat gun if you don't have to because it's kind of dry in this one spot here. Um, but whatever, for this purpose it's fine. So I've got it pressed into this bowl from the studio, a little bit of plastic underneath. Since the plastic is there, it should come off really easily from the mold. And then you can just peel the plastic away. So I've got two of these shapes. that I'm going to attach together to make kind of a hollow egg shape. And my thought for this is that I was going, I'm gonna make a vase that's really wide and kind of flat and put a foot on the bottom and a neck 
um, on the top. But I like this project because depending on which shape you used um, or what shape your mold is, you can make some really funky looking uh, pieces. Okay, so I've got my bottom shape here. I'll use my needle tool or wire tool, um, not wire cutting tool, but this wire scratchy tool to scratch and slip both, both edges that I'm going to be attaching. If you're using your needle tool, you can use or create deep cross hatching like that. If you have one of these wire tools, I'll just go around and scrape. Um, since both of these are leather hard, you'll want to be pretty thorough with your scratching. Um, if you feel like the top edge is kind of too lumpy and you're not confident that it will attach nicely with the other side, you can roll out a big long coil and attach that to the first side and then use it as kind of like Oreo cookie filling that you'll use to connect the two sides. And I'm working on a, a foam bat so that my um, halves don't get flattened on one side, but you can use kind of a, a rolled up towel at home um, or any piece of, of soft foam, but I find this is a little more forgiving than working on right on the table. And then I'll put slip around both of these edges here. Okay, now I will press these two halves together super carefully. And it should be easier than pressing together the two pinch pots because with the pinch pots, you are really relying on yourself to make sure that it's the same width, but since you use the same mold, it should be pretty it should line up pretty exactly, um, as long as they're similar at similar stages of dryness. And I'm just using my finger to close up the seam. You can also use any kind of rib or if you're working with an old gift card, an old gift card or credit card, and smoothing over the seam, making sure it's nice and pressed in. And then also I can use this rib to get rid of, rid of any um, of the leftover texture from the plastic if you want to get rid of it. Okay, and then from here, it's kind of up to you to decide what you, what kind of pot or vase you are trying to make. You could do an opening that's kind of off center if you wanted to, um, or put it right in the middle or do multiple openings. But once you have this shape, then you have more, more options. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a foot on the bottom. So I'll flip it over. I'll use, I have a circular, uh, stencil. That I'll use to help me. And just trace that with my needle tool. You don't need a stencil, you can use anything round in your house. Um, but that's where I think I'm gonna, that's where I'll put my Foot. Okay, so I put scratch and slip, ready to put a foot on. I'm gonna do just a really simple um, kind of pinched foot. So I'll make a really thick coil that I'll attach to that spot.
but as long as it kind of is even on the top, then it should work. You flip it over and then decide what you want to do for, for the top. I added the neck onto my opening and then I used the same pinch method that I used for the foot to make the top edge. And the whole piece has now dried to leather hard and I'm, I'll use my, my rasp tool to make final adjustments to the shape. So this top edge is a little bit uneven. I could definitely leave it uneven if I wanted to, but I think I'm just gonna use my rasp and clean up the edge as much as I can, make it a little sturdier looking. 